Thank you for tuning in to another episode of RIA Collective. I'm your host, Charlie Van Derven. We're going to have some fun today. Uh, I, 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 this is a special interview for me. So we've got a guest by the name of Mark Aarons that's with us today. Mark has been in financial services for about 15 years, and we'll get, the, we'll get the specifics on that. He's got a great name. We're going to get into that too, because who the heck ends up with a name like Money Managers Incorporated? Holy crap, Mark. Uh, <laughs> the cool thing about, you know, when I'm, when I'm looking for guests for the show, uh, and, and mostly that's done browsing LinkedIn profiles or referrals that come from people who listen or who have been on the show before, um, you're looking for something unique, right? We're trying to bring something unique to the audience, uh, with, with every guest we bring on and Mark's unique in that, um, you know, Mark found, found the industry, uh, maybe his second or third career, right? So he comes out of background in automotive. We're going to talk a little bit about that because there's fun, uh, you know, fun things that he brought from that industry to this industry. Um, and, uh, and Mark's, you know, Mark's growing a team. So I think that's good for our listeners, but uh, he's an interesting character and we're going to have some fun today. So Mark Aarons, welcome, my friend. Thanks for being here. Well, Charlie, thank you for having me. Yeah, I look forward to it. this is awesome. You are a character, Mark. <laughs> and i and i love that so if you're listening to the audio like full effect might be on youtube you know because it, it takes about maybe a month to six weeks to process and get something published but if you're listening to audio right now on spotify or apple or wherever you might be listening when you have a chance and you're dr not driving or something check out youtube and you'll get to see mark and i are going to get a little animated we're having some fun so um mark i love like we got to know each other you know a few weeks ago right we had a quick quick yeah. intro call make sure we like each other and uh and think this is a good thing for both of us i liked you immediately um but you had, i mean you you got you got some fun history and we're going to talk a, about a lot of that history prior to financial services um so we'll start there but bring us through like up to where you were in automotive, because you and I both have a little bit of experience with automotive, you more so than I do. And man, what a fun industry that is. And I'm kind of, oh I'm kind of winking because, well, it's fun. <laughs> we were just, we were just chatting before hit record. What a, what a brash in your face industry, right? So Mark, help me out. How'd you get to financial services, man? It kind of found you, right? Yeah, it kind of found me. It was very interesting because, you know, I started off in the nonprofit world. I worked for a nonprofit, raising money and managing people. And then I moved on, uh, one that wanted to go into the corporate world. So I moved on to corporate America, worked there like everybody else in the day. You know, I got, I got downsized, laid off, what have sure. you. Sure. And um, at that point, I was like, I, I got I to gotta find something, got to make ends meet. And I ended up in the car business. And um, it's not your typical person in the car business. I've never sold a single car in my life. Um, <laughs> you know, a lot of people, when I tell them I was in the car business, are like, oh, you're, you're a car salesman. I said, no, nah, I never sold a car in my life. I was a, a new business development uh, person, had a team of people that, you know, we were on the phones and, you know, we increased uh, volume. I did all that. I did help with all the advertisements and stuff like that. And I was, you know, I got paid very well. I was a salary employee, a major car company, company, and, you know, uh, just was wonderful. And I was, you know, for the first week, I was excited, went into the meet, you know, winning because, you know, I, I had never sold a car. So I went in there and I was trying to learn as much as I can and I ended up you know, spending time in the finance department. Now, my background is in, in college is international economics, which specializes in finance. Wonderful. So I understood finance coming out of college. Um, and, but it was just amazing, you know. And the longer that I got stayed in the car business, it's just like, God, I hate my job. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, and I was getting paid six digits. I, I, you know, it was a good paying job. As long as I showed up, I got paid every month, you know? Yeah. And I just kept looking around, kept looking around. And and every day I went in there, I dreaded my work. I hated yeah. it. I, had, I was looking to do something different. Um, I, you know, I didn't take the traditional path where you go to a, where you go to a job fair and, you know, meet up with, some warehouse and get a job. I, I basically just um, met, a, met a friend of mine. I um, was volunteering with the Boy Scouts and uh, we took a group of kids to Japan. And one of their kid, one of the kids' father worked for a, a broker dealer, independent broker dealer. And he said, 
kind of talked to me. We were talking about finance and economics and the stock market. And he's like, you should be in the financial services. And I said, I never thought about that. Yeah. And that's kind of where it all kind of came together, where I, I came from being in the car business, believe it or not. Um, and I learned everything you can possibly learn about in the car business and then ended up going into financial services. He introduced me to a gentleman that was starting an office in, in Newport Beach, California. Cool. Um, and it was uh, New England's, oh, maybe I shouldn't say that, but it was New no, England's. You're right. Yeah, you're right. You know, it was through MetLife. I didn't. You know, going into the, I didn't really know what, you know, what the financial services was like. I, so I needed a training, some kind of training to help me understand sure. what I was doing. Sure. And they were really focusing on um, funds and life insurance. And um, I didn't know any better. And then people that were in the office kind of told me what was going on. And I was like, oh, okay, that's, that's really cool. So I then ended up moving to uh, um, a group of us ended up moving to an independent broker dealer, Crown Capital Securities out of Orange, sure. California. Sure. And, and, and I didn't know better because the, the people that were my mentors at the time were like, hey, this office isn't producing. We need to move to another company. Um, they're going to be shutting the office down. And, you know, me, me being green, not knowing anything, I was like, okay, I, you know, I'll just go where you go, you know, because you guys are teaching me as we go. Uh, was there for for quite a few years, um, broker dealer, learned everything, um, went through a lot of the different, uh, uh, you know, ended up getting my series seven there, ended up getting my series um, 66 there, ended up getting my series 24 there. So, you know, I wanted to build my own career, I had my own branch. Cool. And then I was looking around and I was like, um, these people aren't. These people, these people, I don't want to work with them. I mean, they, they were doing some shady stuff. Oh, oh in my yeah. office. And yeah. I'm like, I'm like, you know, I'm an Eagle Scout, I'm ethics, and I'm just like, I didn't want to do this. Yeah. So I ended up leaving them and um going into another financial uh, advisor company, and they just flat out lied to my face. Yeah. Hmm. Uh they ended up selling the company, I ended up losing that position, and then I was in the corner room, I was like, well, I've been doing this, you know, for, for what, at that time, eight years. Yeah. And I was thinking to myself, I love what I do. I have a platform. I have clients building my, my, my clients. I said, and I ended up going to a, because I already had scheduled a uh, wholesaler due diligence meeting. I ended up meeting some people at, um, at a, in Arizona and he was a CPA and his wife was there and his kid was there and they opened up a firm. And it was like an RIA firm. And I'm like, what's RIA? <laughs> what is that? And yeah. I basically stuck to them like glue the entire week. And yeah. I was asking them questions and this and that. And they were from Washington State. And um, they were telling me it's very simple to do. And I said, I can't be simple. I don't have a lot of capital. Yeah. I don't have a lot of things, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, so the next thing I know, he says, hey, you know, you should research this, get into this. And he ended up introducing me to somebody back east and he basically put together my company for me all right um, man and he's on the dollar i mean back yeah. then in 2009 it was uh you know three thousand dollars yeah uh, with the state easy. Of easy. Easy. easy so i want to so, i want to i want to i want to pause there for a second because i want to talk about how easy that is but i don't want to lose track of something that's on my mind sure. it's funny uh um i i think i've got this right the least trusted industry in this nation is the automotive industry. And maybe, maybe that's used automotives. I don't know if it gets that, that granular. The second least trusted industry in this, in this nation, it might be third, is financial services. Oh, I agree. Right? Right. And, um, and you, you came through both of them. Not only that, I know you and I chatted offline a little bit about your experience at the, uh, you know, at the, at the auto place, uh, but also walking into a situation where you're, you know, you're, you're, you're working for people whose ethics are completely compromised. Um, and so not only is that true on paper, Mark, you got to experience both those industries in a terrible way. <laughs> well, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I almost looked for another career because of it, because I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't sleep at night watching. I was like, what do I do? Yeah. yeah. Also, someone do I, you know, and I did tell people and they just kind of shrugged it off. It was amazing. I told yeah. them. 
people that were at the top. Yeah. Just, oh, whatever. So I, you know, I, I thought I knew what the title of this, of this episode would be. Um, and something about the many paths to financial services or something generic like that. Right. What, what I really think a better title is, and we'll see, we'll see if it flushes out with the, uh, the folks who do the post-production for me. Right. Right. If you hate your job, change it. Right. There's, there are so many people in this country who are trading time for money uh, at a job that they absolutely hate. And I can understand, right? If you've got a family you need to take care of, and certainly that money helps maintain a lifestyle. But if you hate every minute that you roll into the office and every minute that you're there, you can't wait to leave. There's got to be something better. And Mark's, Mark's a perfect example of that. Yeah, absolutely. I used to go to work at 6.30 every morning, six days a week at the at the car dealership. And on the way there, I would have to listen to Mozart to calm myself down. Yeah. So I walk to the door. And every time afterwards, I would have to listen to some Mozart to calm me down on the way home. Yeah. And I was just thinking, God, I got to get out of this. I hate my job. Yeah. I really hate the, I hate the people. I hate the... And, the, and then reality sets in. Just like you said, Charlie, reality sets in. I got to pay the bills. I yeah. Pay, yeah. yeah, family support. You got to pay the bills, so you got to be strategic in the way that you change things up. Sure, um, you can't just quit and look for a job. You got to have a job to go to before you yeah. move to something. Um, but I tell you, you know, I learned I learned a long time ago that there's only so many hours in a day. There's only so many days in a week. There's only yeah. so many days in our life. Yeah, our life is limited. people don't really realize that our our journey in our life is limited on time. And time is, I'll tell you right now, I tell, I tell my clients this, time is the most precious commodity out there. I don't okay. care what you say. Between time and health, you know, money is far third place yeah. to that. Because yeah. you can have all the money in the world, but if you don't have the time to use it and enjoy it, yep. then what, what's the use? Well, and I, I can speak to both those things. So I turned 50 on Tuesday this week. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you. And so, you know, you start to, you look at a number like that and you're like, whoa, when did, when did that happen? Right. I still feel 27. What right. happened? And then uh, uh, I, I had up till yesterday, I had a, a little, a little mole on the side of my nose and some mornings I'd wake up and it'd be light brown. And some mornings I wake up, it'd be dark brown. My wife starts to go, oh gosh, that can't be good. Right. So she made an appointment with the dermatologist. And I went over there yesterday and they're like, why are you here? And I said, cause my wife made me come. And they said, well, that's what, you know, wives are good at helping us with longevity. And I said, but is longevity really the goal? Right. right? And, I'm, and I asked that question very seriously, right? I, I, I challenge authority a lot, right? right? But so maybe that was something of challenging this, this authority doctor figure. Um, I said, is longevity really the goal? I mean, is it really, is, 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 the, is the goal to be here as long as possible or to actually enjoy the time that you've got here? I think it's, that you got. I agree. I agree. Because I've met so many different people, friends, family, whatever that, you know, I passed away, you know, in their forties, fifties. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you never know when the clock stops. That's right. And might as well enjoy your life and not have any regrets. I mean, of course, I don't know the afterworld, but sure. you know, um, I, I, you know, <clears throat> If you don't like what you're doing, you need to change. You need Agreed. to find a path. You need to yeah. change because, you know, this was a scary change for me because, yeah. you know, I was going from a salary six figure job to commission only. Yeah. I'd never done a commission job. So I had faith in myself that I was going to work my butt off um, at first to just start building compliance, you know, yeah. go, through the, go through the process. And you need a mentor. You need a mentor. You can't do things by yourself, and I so agree. that's what I was looking for. And that's um, that definitely, you know, that's you know, I am so much. I am so. I am not only my healthier. You know, I've lost 150. Wow, awesome, dude. Off. Awesome. Off. I'm not stressed. You know, stress was my biggest. I was a stress eater. You know, now I'm not stressed. You know, I have control over my time. Yeah. Oh, uh, if I want to, if I want to go do something, um, you know, and, and the unique thing, and I'll get into this a little bit later, but the way that I've set up my company allows me to do travel the world and still. Yeah, that's amazing. You know, and so, yeah, it's, 
you know, I, I have to tell the listeners, you know, if if you don't like, and it doesn't even have to be, you know, like like me, I'm not traditional. I, I didn't come from a wirehouse or a broker dealer to another broker dealer right out of college. You know, if you know if you had, you know, I've had three jobs before. Yeah, yeah. three careers. Yeah, yeah. three yeah three careers more than jobs. So you you know, Mark, our listeners largely are people who are thinking about going that independent route. Um, and so uh, I paused you before you talked about starting the RIA because, sure. um, you know, it's, it's, it, first off, it's scary. Yes. Um, second, you, you are betting on yourself, but what, what, what better place to bet, right? I mean, if you're going to put right. your money down on something, it, I, I hope it would be you, but yeah. talk about, I mean, you know, you go from really not knowing what an RIA is to having one, how, how easily and how quickly did that happen? Happened in six months. Awesome. And three thousand dollars. That's awesome, man. And, and and one mentor. And one mentor. And and obviously a lot of learning. I don't want to, you know, I mean, certainly the the knowledge gap is is a real thing. Huge. And Huge. you know, yeah, yeah. So um I don't want to minimize it. That's not, you yeah. know, that's that's not it. It's it's an easy leap, but it's also, you know, a, a scary jump because now it's you yourself and you, right? I mean. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's, it, you know, you learn, I learned as I went along, um, I hit a lot of, I, I uh, you know, when you're, when you're doing something for the first time and you read up and you, you talk to as many people as you can, and then you start doing it, you start implementing plans and you learn real quick of, you know, what you don't know. There's yeah. things you don't, you, you don't know what you don't know kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, Cause you, you know, you're like, how do I deal with this situation? You know, um, how do I deal with that situation? And then you start asking mentors this and that. That happened a lot. That happened a lot at the beginning. Um, and I just kind of learned and just kept going through it. Yeah. If, you know, it, 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 it was hard, you know, at first. And, and you, know, you know, not only running, not only running a registered investment advisory firm, but getting new clients and, and you know, going from a commission base to a fee only base. Yeah, um, I, I, you know, I had an opportunity um, after about two, three years being all right, I had broker dealers knocking on my door saying, hey, how would you like to, you know, I think it was the second year right before my license, my seven and 60, 24, we're going to drop off my, my record. Yeah. It was two years only. Um, they started talking, you want to keep your seven, you want you to come here and do production. And I looked at that and my whole but because I was from the car business and unethical, and then I was in this broker dealer that the guy I worked with, my OSJ um, that I worked with, that was unethical. I was like, you know, I, I don't want to have that. I don't want to have, I want to be a truly good fiduciary. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I could, one thing I could never get over was if someone is hybrid, they call it a hybrid, where you're registered with a broker dealer and an RIA. Yeah. I couldn't understand is. If I have a client and I want to sell them an American fund and I can either sell them a class A share on this platform and get paid 5.5% commission, or I could sell that same fund on the RA platform and charge, you know, 1%, you know, you're going to make more money going to the commission route. But what if you're a fiduciary, if you're a true fiduciary, how can it, that's a conflict of interest? I don't know how right. any advisor can be a hybrid because how can you make a decision whether you're going to be charging a commission versus a fee? Because as a fiduciary, the best thing for a client is to charge a fee because it's cheaper for them, yeah. and and they're getting the same asset. So no, not so they're do, actually doing better with that asset because they're not five and a half percent in the hole at the beginning. They have the right. full funds in there, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's, listen, that's all about transparency relationship. And, you know, I think yeah. it just, it speaks to who you are. Yeah. And, and, okay. and I, and I love that. Tell me what, you know, I mean, that, that fast pace, we were, you know, we were talking about automotive industry and, 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 and I'll share that, you know, social advisors nine years ago when I started, it was, oh, it was all about financial advisors, but because it was self-funded and coming out of a, the meager savings account, my wife and I had, had built up. Um, you know, we took revenue where we could find it. So we did represent a handful of car dealerships over the years. And I won't name any because, you know, it's a small community I live in. Um, but we were, I met with one of the sales managers one day. And this, like, this dude was a, a yelling SOB. I mean, he was, dude, he, so he, 
<clears throat> chew you up one side down the other. And then he would quote Bible verses to justify the way he was treating other people. And I was like, wow, man, what a crazy environment. You right. know, and, and I don't think that was an isolated situation, maybe the Bible verse part of it, but that, that kind of brash, that kind of rough interaction with people. Oh, I had it every day um, because the way my position was at the car dealership, I, I never sold a car, so I didn't go up the ranks. Well, I had no respect from any of the sales managers, the general sure. manager. I mean, the ge- I reported directly to the owner. So the general manager couldn't control me um at all and so when i would go to the general manager and say you know these because we did uh, q and i uh, with all the sales people we would keep track of their sales and the profit margins and um how they blew through people we would call people back so uh, to find out about how their how their service was or sure. how, how they bought the car it was you know and yeah. every i mean and and people in the whole it was like a daily it was like a daily whipping every yeah. Yeah, I, and I was like, it got to the point where it's like, I'd have to think, uh, should I bring this up? Or am I in the mood to get yelled at? Yeah. Um, and they do yell and they scream and cry and throw things at you. And, you know, it, yeah. it's just a whole nother world. And then they come walk out behind the doors and to the customer and they're all happy. And oh, yeah, yeah. Turn it on, turn it on. Turn, so turn it on. It's not- that, that toxic environment, obviously, you're not in, in that environment anymore, but that toxic environment, what did that teach you, you know, going into that, you know, your early financial services, working with others? And then, you know, of course, the RIA. You know, I, I learned, I learned, it really, really put me in a position where I wanted to make sure that people I dealt with were that they knew that I was transparent yep. um, and ethics. Yeah. It, it was really all around ethics. It was around ethically dealing with clients. Um, it was about, you know, whether the market went down or went up or sideways, it didn't make a difference. I wasn't going to hide the truth. Yeah. It was you know, always just, this is what it is. Leaving expectations. Um, it, you know, really, it really put a stone into me that I don't want to be like, the other broker deals. I don't want to be like the car dealer. Yeah. As our industry is so not so, you know, untrusted, I wanted to change that thought process and say, hey, you know, I, I'm a fiduciary. I explain fiduciary a lot of times to a lot of my clients and what that means. I actually print out the, the, um, the definition and give it to them just so they, you know, they understand that you come first as a client before I think about my end of the deal. Yeah. Um, and so, I think going from the car dealership <clears throat> to financial services, it really, it really just made me think I can make a difference for people with, with, the, I didn't have to lie and scream and be slithering and what have you to make yeah. a sale. And yeah. that was the biggest push for me. Yeah, that's awesome. And I think the, the, as we see this industry move more independent, the reputation built around this industry that really, you know, is lingering from decades ago and stockbrokers and, 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 and commission sales, where if I don't, you know, if I can't afford my, the, the payment on my big house, maybe I can, you know, sell some stocks to the little old lady in my book and, yeah. and, and, and make the money in a hurry so I can take care of myself on the back end. Um, as our industry continues to migrate to an independent space, the reputation around that industry, the, the industry is going to change too. So that's awesome. I hope so. I hope yeah. so. Uh, I, I, I hope there's a lot of people that are thinking of going independent and getting away from that, yeah. that model. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people, uh, I, you know, I talked to a lot of different people going into the industry um, and I asked them, well, have you, have you met with the big four, you know, the big wirehouses? I'm not going to mention names, but sure. the big wirehouses, I mean, they have a tr- paid training program. They have they pay you yeah. a salary. They have you, know, you can you know start there and learn and then move forward from there. And like I told you, I had a mentor, so you have to find someone that will be able to walk you through this and yeah. and trust them as much as you can. But be be but be aware because they're in it for the the dollar. Sure. Yep. And, and I I'm convinced of that. Those 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 people are in it for the dollar, and they're just using you to get to that. Well, you be, I mean, your, your greatest skill in that environment is your ability to sell. Right. And, and, and that's, you know, it speaks volumes. I don't think that there's, there's not a cloak around that. You know, I think that you walk in that door and you might have a different idea based on what you want to bring to financial services, 
but but on, when you you know when you walk through the door one of those big four right um you're it's it's your ability to sell that is what's most important to the firm it's a you know it's using it's, their culture their 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 way of thinking what they think is important like yeah they want the direction of the company to go yeah. you're just the, the cog in the, in the wheel right they just want you to bring in the assets and that's yeah. what it comes down to that's it that's it. You're their sales channel. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah. And I, like, like I say, I don't think there's anything hidden about that. Uh, you know, you might, it might be a rude awakening when someone walks out of college with all these altruistic ideas and, and certainly they're still serving clients and they're still doing a good job with clients, but typically the firm initiatives comes first. Yeah. Um, I want to keep oh, the paycheck. That's it. <laughs> so I want to, uh, Mark, Mark, I want to, I want to switch gears just a tiny bit because you've got an asset ab above everything that is you or not above, but, you know, in addition to everything that you make up as a person, um, your name, man, how does a guy end up with money managers, Inc.? <laughs> I guess I was, well, <laughs> I guess so, man. I guess so. I, uh, yeah. I went through a whole bunch of different names. Um, I started off with different names and I was talking, I believe it, I was talking to some friends and I said, Hey, I got to come up with some name um, because I want to build something bigger than myself. So a lot yeah. of times, a lot of independents put their name in the title. Like before yeah. mine was Aaron's financial services, my last name. Right. Yeah. And I was like, I got to change because I, I want to make this bigger than myself. Um, so people feel part of a company and not just, it's not, I, I had loftier goals when I started this before, you know, it wasn't just going to be myself. Yeah. I wanted to have other people involved in it. And so, um, one of my friends says, well, you deal with people's money. Why not just call you money? And then you manage people, you manage the money. And, uh, why not you just, you know, call yourself money manager and incorporate and that's really where the name came from. So I went on to the state of California's website, DBA, and I filed, you know, my, my consultant that I hired had filed with the state of California. No, no one had the name. So crazy. We ended up, we, uh, now there is a money manager independent in Texas, I found out. Okay. Uh, so uh, out of the state of Texas, so, you know, there was, uh, you know, I don't know how they allowed both names. I guess two different state regulators allowed two different names. Sure. Um, so I was really curious how it was going to work out when I moved to the SEC because, and I'm not, I'm an SEC registered re freshman money manager. Zane. Money manager. Zane. I love it, man. I, 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 and that's where it came from. It just, it, it just was a, a friend of mine that said, you did, you, you deal with people's money and you manage it. Why not just tell people yeah. what you do in your title of your company? I, I am so shocked that that name was available to you. That's, that's, you know, that's where the question comes from is, you know, like, wow, how'd you, you know, like only one person gets that. Yeah. Yeah. How fun. How fun. Well, lucky man, the timing was right. Um, now you got offices in Vegas you got offices yes. in, in Southern California. Yes. yes. Um, and so, and have, so the team is growing. Yeah. The team is grown. I have an advisor that's uh, working up in at Escadero, California. I have an advisor that's working in Orange, California. That's where we originated from. Okay. I moved to Vegas and opened up an office in Las Vegas. Um, and it wasn't like I was looking to open an office in Vegas so quickly. Um, my, you know, my spouse uh, is CPA and uh, was offered a promotion in the company and uh, moved us here for the promotion. So I, I yeah. kind of, I'm going to be here. Might as well open up an office. But uh, yeah. Half my time in California, half my time here. So yeah, yeah, that's cool. So with, with those kind of remote locations, and this is a question that I uh, I like to ask because I've got my ideas around it because we've got a remote team as well. Um, talk to me about culture. How do you how do you help to maintain culture and you know the the interconnectivity there? We do. You know, obviously Zoom, you can do a lot with, but it's difficult to you know go grab a beer together or you know take some downtime with each other. So yeah. what, what do you do to combat that with you guys being in different locations? Well, I, um, you know, that's a, that, that's a struggle. And yeah, to be honest, that's a struggle. Um, we all have the same mindset on the people on the team. We're oh. all about, we're all about helping the client to be the most ethical as possible. Um, I do meet with the orange advisor, um, monthly. Um, I talk to the, uh, advisor, Nat Cascadero, Ely. Um, we have systems set up where we we have a back office secure site that 
Um, we can message each other anytime. Cool. Uh, we'll pick up the phone. We share spreadsheets so we track things together. So someone changes it, they can see the change and they can see what's going on. Um, but the cult, the culture is very, it's, it's not a, it's a different kind of culture. I have to admit, because when I used to work, work in a car dealership or when I worked for another couple, other broker dealer, you go into an office and you could do stuff. I find myself to be more productive doing it this way. Yeah. Um, it is a challenge for the culture. Um, once my goal is once we get the team big enough, um, we will, I will probably do um, a once a year annual conference. Cool. And bring everybody together with their families yeah. and um, be able to go over some ideas, kind of brainstorm. Um, we started to do a Monday, a Monday Zoom call with everybody um, where we just talk things out, um, run ideas past each other. This is what I'm coming. This is what I'm coming out of. This is uh, I have a challenge. How do I deal with this? How do I deal with that? Because um, people have different levels of experience. So we kind of back each other up. Another good thing is that um, I I can cover. So when you have your own business, you can't you can't take a vacation, truly take a vacation because right. you've got to deal with the clients. So the way that our system is set up is that if I want to go on vacation, I have my advisor that we have the very similar ideology of how we invest. So he understands my investment strategy. I understand his investment strategies, both of them, and everything's in the link. So I can go. I can take a two-week vacation, and if anything needs to happen, they can take care of it. Still there, they, take it, right? They yeah. Still take care of it. Um, um, so it allows the flexibility. Allows you to balance your life. Because remember what we what we've talked about. Money is not everything. Yeah. I mean, money. You need money to live, but time is more important. Spending time with your family, having off time is more important, and um, being able to develop this backup system. Where if you take a vacation for a couple of weeks, my, my other advisor goes to Brazil um, for a couple, you know, three or four weeks, and we're able to. I mean, he checks in once, you know, once a week, but yeah. we're able to take care of his clients' needs. Yep, that's awesome. We, I, you know, I echo the productivity piece of it, right? So we had right up till March twentieth, twenty twenty. Um, we had an office in downtown Daytona Beach where we had, oh, gosh, I don't know, eight or nine people coming to the office, and so. We were in a we were in an area where there were bars and restaurants and fun things to do. So you know if you have a have a meeting and a beer at the same time and yeah. you know that that's there's a lot of camaraderie that's built around hey let's go grab lunch together and you know kicking out at four thirty for happy hour one day a week or whatever that might be. Right. Now we we are our 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 team now in Daytona Beach is four. Actually, it'll be it'll be four Monday. We hired yeah you, know, you know we got a guy starting Monday that that right. is local. And the rest of our team now is spread out. We've got, you know, we've got people in Virginia, North Carolina. We've got one person in Dominican Republic. So I agree with you. The productivity of working remote is awesome. It's the culture we lose. So I'm going to share. And uh, when we do our Monday Zoom, our staff meeting is unlike any other I've ever been a part of. Uh -huh. um, because, it, you know, it's, it's everybody getting together. It's usually a 45-minute meeting. We don't talk about, well, we talk about work a little bit. Right. We take turns going around our Brady Bunch Zoom screen, uh -huh. and we, we talk about one positive impact we've had on the business in the last week, uh -huh. one positive impact we've had on our personal lives in the last week, and then if you're watching on YouTube, you'll be able to see this, but if you're uh, listening to the podcast, we've got a book called 3,000 Questions About Me. Wow. And so once you go through the, the impacts, now you pick a number one through 3,000. And we ask you a question and you've got to answer it to the best of your ability. And some of them, Mark, are like, what's your favorite color? Right, and other, right. others are like, what's the meaning of life? You know, so it's just like, wow. you never know what you're, you might get something really, really hard hitting and you might get something like, do you like cheese? You know, I mean, <laughs> so it's, it's fun because, you know, it's, it's, it's a time that we all look forward to. Um, we're all getting to know each other a little bit better. Um, now, if you don't want to answer the question, you got to bring a show and tell, a la third grade, right? So you got to bring you got to bring something that again the team gets to bond with you a little bit over something. Oh, great, yeah. I, so I steal that from you. Do it, man. Me. Do it. Yeah, three, three, three thousand questions about me. It's really fun. When our when our team was really small and we could 
you know, maybe be crude, I guess, maybe this, yeah. we, we, uh, we did play, we used to play cards against humanity, but you can't do that as the team expands. They're just, just, you know, you just too much stuff in there. You can't talk about. So uh, yeah, we had to, we had to expire that as, uh, as we got bigger. So. Um, I think it's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. I think that's the closest, you know, that you can get to the getting people to connect is to do something like that. We're, we're working towards that direction Yeah. Uh, right now um, because, you know, something that's very different than most companies, my company is, is that, Yes, they don't have an equity stake in the company, but we do revenue share. So it's like awesome. um, it's 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 like it's their own book of business. Yeah. Well, they're an entrepreneur themselves yeah. in what they do, but they're under my umbrella, and they use all the resources so it minimizes their costs um, by spreading the resources on many more people. Yeah, um, and that's just you know that just comes into share you know lowering your costs to be more productive. And being able to have a team of mentors with you to help yeah. you out. I love it. Now you've talked about growing that team. And in fact, well, I'm, I'm, I'm looking to grow the team. Awesome. Um, you have to be the right person. Of course. I, uh, of course. You know, um, we're looking, we're, we're currently looking for advisors uh, cool. that are in the business that um, want to leave that, that, that trench and um, want to you know, join up and build their own book of business and be independent. But I call it be independent, but not by yourself. So yeah, it's kind of yeah. independent. It's kind of a hybrid of an independent, but not by yourself. Um, there's going through this business, going through doing this. I learned that, um, you know, it's very interesting because uh, one of the advisors been with me since 2014. He says, do you realize I've been able to grow my business better more because I've been with you than I was with my last few. Awesome. And I said, well, tell me, why is that? He goes, because you handle all the administrative stuff. You handle all the complaints. And people don't realize that if you're doing this by yourself, yeah, you spend a lot of time on compliance, on <clears throat> making sure that compliance is happening. Yeah, it's easy when you're only by yourself and you do your own compliance, but you spend a lot of time on compliance. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah. you know, so it, it, it really lowers the cost. So we're looking for people anywhere in the United States that has a license 65 or 66 um, and that wants to build their book of business and be independent. You own your own clients. It's a very different model than a lot of other RAs out there. You know, there's RAs out there that say, I'll pay you $5,000, but it's kind of, I look at it as kind of the model of the wirehouses, it, you know, because when, when they pay you a salary, your clients aren't your client. Yep. They, they're the business client. They're the yep. company's client. Yeah, and they're looking, and I can tell you right now. I mean, it's no genius. They're looking to build their book of business so they can sell that retire and get out of the business. And sure. they're using you just like a warehouse. They're using you just like a car dealership, yeah. and it's no different. So I wanted when I started Money Manager Sync, I wanted to do something different that helped financial advisors truly become independent, but not by themselves and be successful. I love that. And, um, and build, you know. So we're trying to walk that line between, you know, and I love the idea about the Zoom call with the questions and the, I, I'm going to definitely start it's, implementing that. Um, yeah, next it's fun. Week. It's, um, it's fun. You get to know a lot about people, you know, so long as they answer honestly, right? Because some of those questions yeah. are tough. Um, but you get to know a lot of, a lot about people. And Mark, be, before we before we uh, expire here today, there's one thing I like to ask, right? You've gone through this transition. You've, you've done, you've, you, you've built the RIA from the ground up. Is there anything that, two sides to this question, is there anything that you did particularly well that you want to recommend that others who are going to follow that path do the same? And the opposite end of that, is there anything that you did that you're like, oh God, that was a bonehead move. Don't yeah. do that. Oh, I had a lot of bonehead moves. <laughs> <laughs> Which goes right into the first question. You yeah. know, um, a lot of, you know, a lot of, a lot of us have our own egos and um, sure. we want to start our own IRA. If I was do this all again, I would look for someone like myself. I would look for someone that I could plug into. And there are, there are other companies out there that plug, you can plug into yep. and, and just focus on building your business and your brand and what have you. Um, I think that um, I tried a lot of, I've tried a lot of different kind of software I've tried, you know, a lot of a lot of costs that I did to try things out. As much as you research and do stuff, yeah, you, you definitely you, you definitely have to get 
um, you got to have that mentorship or someone that's been down that path already and be able to see, and you might like or dislike things like that. That's something that I would do differently. Okay. Um, uh, I would definitely, I mean, you know, not what you don't know, you don't know, right? So yeah. I started this business. I wish I would, you know, I've been doing this since 2001. So I wish back in 2001, someone would have told me, Mark, you should start in the RAA business. You should plug into this company and they have all the contracts. They have everything. And then you're independent. And if you don't like them and you want to start your own, you can move from there. That's what I would have done differently than just okay. going through all the headaches of, you know, I've been through, I've been through multiple audits. They take time out of your day. Um, I mean, months out of your, out of your, out of your job. Um, and I wish I was someone else would do it and someone else would do it. Yeah. But yeah, I would, I would definitely, I would definitely research companies, look at the end game in mind. Where do you want to end up at? And then try to find a path that ends that direction. Wonderful. Wonderful. And of course, you know, I think a lot of, uh, a lot of it is you go from being an advisor to a CEO, even if it's just you, right? You're, right. you're now, you're responsible for accounting. You're responsible for all your operations. You're responsible for, you know, again, your, your archiving and your, you know, your records keeping and there, yeah. So many facets that you don't have to do when you are I a even, producer. I, I even take out the trash. <laughs> you even have to take out the trash. I, we've had, we've had one guest say that I've even got to, you know, I got to, I got to fix a printer. <laughs> Printer yeah. from the bathrooms, you know, to, yeah. Yeah. All, to all, yeah. I, depending on the time of day, someone says, So, oh, what do you do for a living? I guess, well, I'm a janitor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, an exactly. I'm an accountant. I'm an accountant. I'm the chief custodian at, at Money chief Managers custodian. Inc. Yeah. yeah exactly. exactly. <laughs> So, so Mark, you know, uh, it sounds like you're interested in hearing from any of our listeners that may be looking for a new landing spot. Um, that's awesome. Um, you know, you said a few times, and I, I, I love what you said. I, you, I echo it. I agree with it. Find a mentor. Now, your time is valuable, as is everybody. So I know you can't be a mentor to everyone. But if, if we got some, some, you know, young advisors and, you know, listening, and they're thinking about making a change, and they got some ideas and questions, would you be a resource to those folks? Oh, absolutely. I love, awesome, I love helping people. I mean, that's, awesome. that's why I'm in this business. Yeah. Um, I had a, a client's daughter ask me, um, I want to be, uh, I, you know, what I'm thinking about doing the CFP. I'm thinking, why, you know, you, do you have a CFP? And we kind of talked about, I don't. And I, I talked to them why I don't versus, because I, I went the very non-traditional route of doing this. Yeah. Um, I, you know, learned all this stuff from college and then keep learning as I go. But yeah, I, I have no problem having conversations with people and kind of telling them and listening to them to see what they want to do and and then kind of pushing them in the direction, you know, of what, what they should do. Um, I think newer I think newer advisors coming out of college definitely if they don't have financial they didn't have this financial I, I learned this. They have an actual financial service to yeah. uh, bachelors. I yeah. that wasn't available to me. I would have taken that when I went yeah. through. Um, you know, and then they get their CFP, they get their CHU and their and their CHLU and all the other different things. And what those titles mean when you're younger is that it's showing the public, showing the potential clients that you have the knowledge base to help them. Yeah. And so it's important for younger people to have that education and do that stuff. But uh, I would definitely be very open to helping people out and steering in the right direction. Um, very interested if we, if you're in the business and and you're tired of your compliance person taking a week and a half to get you approved on on an advertisement. It's usually about um, maybe five minutes at the longest. I have all these um, automated systems that are set up where you upload and I look at it and then and then I hit and wherever I'm at I look at it and then I have a couple other people that look at it as well if I'm not available and we're pretty fast at that stuff. So. All the stuff that I was frustrated with, with the broker dealer, um, I've mitigated that in our company so that people don't have to, you know, they, they want to do an answer to their to potential clients about the market. Um, How is the market going to be affected by Elizabeth Queen, you know, Queen Elizabeth's death? Uh, you know, are they in, you know, what, what, you know, stuff like that. You can't write a piece up about that and send it out two weeks after the debt, you know, the thing, you got to do it within the time frame when it's on yeah. everybody's mind. So we've really focused all of our compliance stuff that people are very fast. 
It's very easy. It's all automated. Um, I do believe that, you know, um, uh, each people have to lower their costs. Um, you know, we do, we do cost sharing, but um, it's very minimal, very minimal. But yep. yeah, I'm very open. They can call me up. My, my cell number is 714-470-3430. My direct line to my cell phone. Awesome. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm putting this out to your listeners only because I, I don't normally <clears throat> give out my cell phone to the public. Yeah. Uh, uh, because I do have a front office that usually goes through my 714-887-8000 number, uh, which is a unique number that I, that I also got. Into. Yeah, man, geez, yeah, um, you're right, right time, right place for something. Yeah, and I'm definitely open to talking to people. It does make a difference on what level of a producer you are. I mean, if you have $5 million, $20 million, $100 million, it doesn't make a difference. Um, we're, we're, we're very open. It really needs to be a win-win situation where we are in the same level or uh, uh, culture wise of what we're trying to accomplish and then the, the website is oc money managers is that yeah, right yeah you know the story behind that a lot of people get that confused because you know i try to get money managers inc.com right but that was taken by the texas company aha uh -huh. because so I, <laughs> I started in orange county we also have a website we also have a link called lvmoneymanagers.com for las vegas yeah. we have a, a web it all goes to the same website Okay. All goes to the same website. And we also have SLO moneymanagers.com for San Luis Obispo. Cool. Um, but uh, yeah, it all goes to the same website for OC moneymanagers.com. If you go to my profile at the top, um, we're going to about us and then my profile at the bottom of my profile, there's a link to book, a, a book an appointment with me. Feel free cool. to book an appointment with me and I'll give you a call and we'll have a, you know, we'll have, you know, 10, 20 minute conversation and see if we, you know, if I can help you or steer you in the right direction. I've, I've gone through all the bad and ugly. So I, can, <laughs> I, I have no skin in the game, you know, in telling, in telling your listeners or potential financial advisors that, you know, hey, if you're going to go that, understand this is how they work. This is, this is you know, I've, I've researched it, done it, I've been through it. I can tell you, you know, it's interesting when, when my advice, one of my advisors came to me, he says, he actually talked to me back in 2009. He didn't come back to me in 2014. He says, he called me up and he said, Mark, I'm going through this issue with my, my RIA and um, everything that you told me back in 2009 has happened to me. And I said, yeah, because I've been through it. Yeah. I've done it. I've, you know, I've been through the broker dealer and what they did and how they lied to you. And I've been with an OSJ that, that's unethical. And so, um, you know, he's like, I definitely need to move over to you and be, be part of the team. Yeah. Timing is everything, right? I mean, you can, you can, you can, you can put it out there and you can, you can give help. And, yeah. uh, and when the time's right, that's, you know, that's, and I, I say it a lot, it doesn't matter what, you know, what the move is, what the buy is, what it is, it's all about timing. So Mark, listen, you're, you're awesome. You're fun to talk to. You're, you're an animated guy. Anybody watching on YouTube knows that um, you've got a lot of great experience outside the industry that helps you, I think, be a better professional in the industry. Thank um, yeah. So, and thank um, you very much for for doing this. This is fantastic. I, you know, no matter who I talk to and stuff, I always am learning. Like I'm learning from you about yeah. the Zoom. I mean, that's a great great idea because you know, um, you always got to do something better better for yourself and for your team to make it better. And you're, I'm always looking for ideas. And another thing is, you know, before I, before we yeah. end, yeah. another thing is. Um, the one thing I asked my advisor, I said, why do because I didn't expect him to stay with me. I basically, our conversation was, hey, let's move your clients over, establish here, and then you'll have time to go start your own RIA and then move over off to them. So that sure. was the goal in mind. I wasn't looking for advisors back then. And it was like, here, you can use me. I'm going to charge you, but you're going to use me. And then eventually you can go. And he's still with me. And he's still with me. It's awesome. You know? And it's so awesome. the, the thing about it, that he said was, I said to him, what, what, why are you still with me? What, what, what made you go, you know, Mark, I actually have input on how we run things here. It, I'm not cool. dictating because if any advisor comes up with an idea that's better than mine, we yeah. go, we yeah. go, we'll try it. Yeah, we got we got a similar situation, right? I, uh, I started the company, but that doesn't make me the smartest guy at the company. One of my favorites, one of my favorite Steve Jobs quotes, and I'll, I'll butcher it a little bit, but um, I don't hire smart people and tell them what to do. I hire smart people and let them tell me what to do. Exactly. You know? Same here. Yeah. Same here. Yeah. But I think that's, yeah. Yeah. 
That's great. And that, you know, I think that's a, that's a, listen, it's a credit to you, but it also, you know, that's how you retain good people. Right. I mean, yeah, yeah heaven, I, we did, we've done a lot of recruiting over the years. Mm -hmm. And so in doing that, I've done a lot of research based on that. Um, do you know that money's like third or fourth? Oh yeah. If, if oh, for, yeah. When you're hiring somebody, it's like growth opportunity, input into final product. I mean, these things rank well ahead of the money that you provide um, as, as, you know, just the gratitude for the work that they do, you know, things like that. I mean, look at me. I went from a six digit income, mm -hmm. zero. It wasn't about the money. It was about me was being told what to do and how to do it. And yep. they were hiring me for my expertise on, this, on the car dealership side. And I was willing to walk away from a six digit income yep. in California where it's expensive to live yeah, you know, I had it planned out where I had savings. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. you know it's the same thing with financial advisors. If you, you know, the, the number one complaint I hear, and, and it's a complaint I had my my whole career was, I, I don't. My managers tell me I have to put this round round peg in a square hole. It doesn't work that way. This yeah. is not the way to do it. And I think that I think that's most of the. I think you have a very valid point there that it's most valuable that if you're part of the team, you know you. You don't have to have ownership be part of the team to make the team different or to, to right. grow your own business or grow everybody's business. Uh, we all learn from each other. We all have that's different right. brains, different ways of perspectives, different perceptions. And um, I think that's what's unique about us is that, you know, we're, you know, I, the, the only reason I'd ever say, no, we can't do that is because of the compliance reason. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That would be the only reason, and I can point, and I would, and I would, and I would show you the rule and regulation why, you know. But besides that, if it's within the lines, we're, we're ethical, and uh, we yeah. we'll try anything. I mean, we're right now we're in the process of rewriting. You know, I I had made up a new investment agreement and sent it out to the advisors, and I said this is kind of our new investment agreement because we moved from the state of California to the SEC this year. And so um, we had to redo our investment advisor agreement. And I used to have two or three of them, you know, financial planning, EPAs only, sure. uh, uh, you know, man, money under management. So I had different ones. And I ended up saying, how can we make this simpler? So I put it all together in one sheet. You just mark boxes initial. And advisor can pick those. I don't like how this reads, this first paragraph. And this paragraph, the old one was better. And you got to yeah. get rid of this section, this section. And then I talked to the other advisor and he's like, yeah, that makes sense. So then I bring that and I talk to, I have an on, on site or offsite compliance consultant that's been doing it for many years. And this is, we want to change this stuff. Can you help me? You know, is it okay if I take this out of the agreement? Cause I, you know, and he goes, yeah, there's no problem. You can do that. That's, you know, you can do this. Oh, you have to have this in there. You have yeah. to have that in there. You know what I mean? And so now we have an agreement that was inputted by all the advisors. Yeah, yeah. Agreements. Now, this is the agreement. Because I've been there. There's the agreement. I can put it on the agree. I don't do what this says. That's you know, this is our agreement. Then you need to be doing what this says. That goes back to what the broker dealers do. Yeah, yeah. So, Mark Aaron's. Uh, thank you for being a resource to our listeners. Thank you for being a guest. And thank you, listeners, for tuning in to another episode of RIA Collective. If you like what you heard, I'd love for you to tell your friends about it. I'd love for you to subscribe. And of course, leave us a review so more people can be impacted by awesome minds like Mark Aaron's. Mark, thanks for being here. I've had a wonderful time. Thanks for the chat. Thank you, Charlie. I enjoyed it. Thank you for having me on your podcast. Of course.